Hey guys, it's Sam. Welcome back to my channel. For today's video, as you guys can see by the title down there, today I am talking about Jeffrey Dahmer. And just a fair uh, trigger warning, there is very gruesome details in his murders and within his crimes. So if you get grossed out easily, I would recommend not watching this one. And I'll see you guys on my next video. But before we get started, please don't forget to subscribe and little button down there. And if you want to learn more about Jeffrey Dahmer, then just keep on watching. Jeffrey was convicted as a serial killer and sex offender who murdered 17 males between 1978 and 1991 and he was actually killed by a fellow inmate in 1994. Jeffrey was born in Milwaukee, Wisconsin on May 21, 1960 to Lionel and Joyce Dummer. He was described as an energetic and happy child until the age of four when he actually had to have surgery to correct a double hernia and after the surgery he became extremely withdrawn after the birth of his younger brother as well as the family's frequent moves. Jeffrey developed a fascination for collecting bones he also collected a variety of butterflies as well as dragonflies where he would store in jars. From this, he moved on to collect animal roadkill and he actually began to dismember the bodies of the animals. Jeffrey claimed that his compulsions about necrophilia and murder began when he turned 14. It also appears that his parents' divorce a few years later were actually the trigger for him to turn his thoughts into actions. Jeffrey attended Ohio State University, but he actually dropped out after just one quarter at the school. His dad insisted for him to join the army, so he did in late December 1978. Jeffrey's drinking problem persisted and he was actually discharged in early 1981 due to his heavy drinking. After his army discharge, he actually went back to Ohio where he later got arrested for disorderly conduct and his father decided to send him to live with his grandma in Wisconsin and he got arrested when two boys accused him of touching himself in front of them. Because of this crime he received a one-year probationary sentence. Jeffrey hunted out men, mostly African Americans, outside of bars, malls, and bus stops. He would lure them back home with the promise of giving them drugs and money. He would also give them alcohol and it was laced with drugs before he would strangle them to death. Jeffrey would then engage in sex acts with the corpses before dismembering them and disposing of the bodies. He would often take photos of the bodies at various stages of the murder process as souvenirs. Jeffrey's first murder actually happened after him graduating high school in June of 1978 when he picked up a hitchhiker and took him home to his parents' house. Jeffrey actually got the young men drunk and when the victim tried to leave, Jeffrey actually striked him with a 10 pound bar barrel. Jeffrey then touched himself on the dead body and then proceeded to dismember the body. And then he packed the body parts in plastic bags. He then went to bury the bags in the backyard of his parents home after almost 10 years after that jeffrey killed another man that he had met at a gay bar they checked into a hotel and got drunk the next day jeffrey woke up to find the man dead next to him and he says that he 
had no memory of what had happened the night before. He then bought a large suitcase where he transported the body to his grandma's basement. Then Jeffrey proceeded to dismember the body and masturbate on the corpse before disposing of it. Jeffrey met his next victim, who was just a 14-year-old boy outside of a bar. And he lured the boy to his home with the promise that he would give him 50 bucks for an exchange of nude photos. I'm sorry if you guys hear weird noises. My neighbor next door likes to slam the kitchen um, cabinet doors. Jeffrey then strangled the boy and he actually kept the boy in the basement for about a week. Then he dismembered it and discarded of the body in the trash. On March 24, 1988, Jeffrey took another victim and he actually killed this victim in his bedroom, again in his grandma's house. Again, Jeffrey drugged the victim and proceeded to strangle him to death. This time, in order to get rid of the body, Jeffrey actually put the, the body in, on acid in order to dissolve it. With this victim, Jeffrey actually kept the skull. That same year in 1988, his grandma was just tired of Jeffrey's late nights and drunkenness that she decided to kick him out. In September of 1989, Jeffrey encountered a 13-year-old boy that actually resulted in charges of sexual exploitation and second-degree sexual assault. For this, Jeffrey actually pleaded guilty and he actually claimed that the boy did appear older and that's why he made the advances. While Jeffrey was waiting for his sentencing for this crime, Jeffrey actually, he wasn't actually in jail, so he actually lured and drugged another victim. This was a 24-year-old aspiring model, and he again strangled him to death. For this one, he, Jeffrey, kept certain body parts, such as his genitals and his skull, and later they were found in his home during the trial about the sexual exploitation of the 13 year old boy during the trial for the sexual exploitation jeffrey testified and he said he saw the error of his ways and that this would make a turning point in his life because of this the judge actually agreed to a one-year prison sentence with day release which meant that Jeffrey was still able to continue to work his day job. And when his day ended, he were to return to jail. He was also going to have a five year probation. And after only serving 10 months in jail, Jeffrey was granted early release by the judge. Over the following two years, Jeffrey's murder victim count escalated really quick. And he brought his total from four to 17 victims. Along the way, Jeffrey developed certain rituals that he would do to his victims. He started experimenting with ways to dispose the body, such as using chemicals to process and dissolve the bodies. And often, Jeffrey actually started eating the flesh of his victims. He also attempted lobotomies, which he would actually drill on the lobes of his victims. He would actually inject the victims with muriatic acid and he said that he did this because he wanted to keep his victims in a zombie state like because he said he wanted to have complete control over them. Jeffrey's next victim was killed on May 20th, 1990 and he was actually the first one to be killed um, in Jeffrey's new apartment. He had actually met his victim who was a sex worker and invited him over to his apartment. Jeffrey actually drugged the victim with sleeping pills and he then strangled him. The next victim was an actual acquaintance of Jeffrey and they were actually last seen at a party that they had attended on June 14th, 1990. Again, Jeffrey killed him and used acid to get rid of his body. 
For his next victims, Jeffrey would do the same and he would strangle his victims and dismember the bodies. On May 27th, 1991, Jeffrey's neighbor actually called the police to report that there was an Asian boy walking outside naked in the street. When the police arrived, the boy was actually incoherent, like he was not making sense. But Jeffrey did speak to the police and he told them that the 19-year-old boy was his lover. The crazy part of this story is that this boy was actually the brother of the teen that Jeffrey had molested just three years prior. Once police left, Jeffrey killed the boy and proceeded with his usual rituals. Before Jeffrey was actually arrested, he had murdered four more men. Now, Jeffrey was actually arrested because Milwaukee police officers picked up a victim that got away from Jeffrey. This was a 32-year-old African-American who was wandering the street with handcuffs dangling from his wrists. Police actually decided to investigate this because the young male actually said that this weird dude guy had actually drugged him and restrained him. When they arrived at Jeffrey's apartment, he calmly offered to get the keys for the handcuffs. The victim had also claimed that Jeffrey had threatened him with a knife. So when the officers were at the apartment, um, they decided to actually look for the keys themselves. When they were walking around the apartment, the police actually saw some of the Polaroids that Jeffrey just had like laying on his apartment. And they, the pictures were of dismembered bodies. Jeffrey was actually arrested that day. When, they, when he got arrested that day, the police office obviously processed his apartment and obviously rated it as a crime scene. And they, when they actually were doing that, they actually found body parts in his refrigerator. In January of 1992, his trial began. And due to the majority of Jeffrey's victims were, were African American, they were, there were considerable um, racial tensions so strict precautions were taken they actually put up a eight foot barrier of bulletproof glass inside of the um, courtroom to separate them from the gallery because they were afraid that someone was going to try and do something to him jeffrey initially pleaded not guilty to any of the charges despite having confessed to the killings during the police investigation he eventually changed his plea to guilty by virtue of insanity, meaning that he was not in his right mind when he was committing these murders. His defense actually shared some gruesome details of his behavior as proof that someone insane could commit these murders. The jury did choose to believe the prosecution's assertion that Jeffrey was fully aware that Jeffrey was fully aware that his acts were evil and he chose to commit them. After deliberating for 10 hours on February 15, 1992, the jury came back and found Jeffrey Dahmer guilty of all charges. It was reported that Jeffrey actually adjusted well to prison. And he eventually convinced authorities to allow him to integrate to general population because he was kept in um, isolation. And he, it was said that he did find religion in books. Jeffrey Dahmer was killed on November 28th in 1994 by a fellow inmate. And in 2015, Christopher who was the inmate that murdered um, Jeffrey, he actually spoke to the New York Post. Christopher said that he was not only disturbed by Jeffrey's crimes, but that Jeffrey would also taunt the other inmates by fashioning severed limbs out of prison food. And he would actually drizzle like packets of ketchup uh, to like for it to appear like blood. So that is it for Jeffrey Demers 
story. I really hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and please subscribe in the little button down there. As always, all of the products that I use in today's video are going to be linked down in the description box as well as my social media. And until then, I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye!